record this meeting. Okay. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, before we get going with the um, public hearing, I would like to introduce somebody who's new in the room who's on their, his second day here in the town of Harwich as a town planner. Um, Paul, love to hear you uh, introduce yourself for the board and the public at large. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm glad to be here and um, pleased to meet all of you. Um, I've uh, I've worked as a, a, a professional planner for the last 35 years. Um, I have a master's degree in regional planning from UMass Amherst, and I'm certified by the American Institute of Certified Planners. Um, I started off my career in Duxbury and um, was there for five or six years, and um, then ended up moving on to Orleans, and I was the planner in the town of Orleans. I think I was the second planner in the town. Um, I was there for five or six years, um, did a, a brief stint, uh, a year working in the private sector doing consulting work. Um, I helped Nextel Communications set up their wireless communication network on the Cape and Islands, finding sites for them, getting them leased, and um, getting some of them permitted. Um, <clears throat> that project, after that was winding down, um, Came back to the public sector, things I, work that I was familiar with, and um, went to work for the town of Weymouth as their economic development planner. Um, about five years after that, the job opened up in um, the town that I currently live in, the town of Marshfield, and I started working as the um, planning director for the town of Marshfield. Stayed, stayed uh, um, close to home for about 10 years, and then an opportunity for uh, more career advancement, more money. Um, um, came along to go to work for the town of Norwood, and um, I wrapped up my work there a couple weeks ago. Um, so I'm, I'm bringing all of that experience um, here to the town of Harwich, and um, I'm interested in, in um, um, refocusing my work on, on more towards environmental planning and helping to um, protect the town's coastal groundwater and surface water resources. Back when I worked in Orleans, um, I was part of the uh, Pleasant Bay Resource Management Plan Technical Advisory Committee when it was first uh, created way back then, and I see that, that uh, there's still a, a group that's still working on managing Pleasant Bay, and um, um, I'm looking forward to getting back uh, into doing some of that kind of work. Um, I was in Pleasant Bay uh, early Thanksgiving morning, rounding up some oysters, and um, um, we, our family has a house uh, that I share with my siblings in Orleans, and so um, we are here in this area quite a bit, as, as much as we can be, and um, um, looking forward to, uh, as I said, working, working with you uh, to serve the town and the residents of Harwich. Thank you so much. Great to have you aboard, well and uh, we'll be calling you pretty soon here to address some of the issues on the agenda tonight. And we start off with a public hearing with PB 2022-24, John Carey, owner applicant, seeks a site plan review and approval of a use special permit for a multifamily conversion with waivers pursuant to the code of the town of Harwich sections 325-21Q and 55. The property is located at Five Bells Neck Road, assessor's ID 10-G1 in the RM zoning district. Good evening, Mr. Carey. Good evening. Good evening. Riley, good to have you here. Uh, good afternoon or good evening. Bill Riley on behalf of John Carey. Uh, John is uh, you know, very anxious and excited about this project, revitalizing the old school building and providing uh, affordable housing, one bedroom apartments that uh, you know, I think we can all agree are necessary. Uh, so I'll let John explain the project and then Great. answer whatever questions the board might have. Great. Yes, uh, good evening. Thank you guys for having me. Um, I prepared some notes just so I'd be uh, succinct in my comments. Um, I appreciate the planning board taking the time to review this project. 
Uh, I applaud your recent revision of the multifamily zoning that's made a project like this possible. Um, like I said, my name is John Carey. I'm 34 years old. I live here on Cape Cod. Um, I have a half dozen rental units that I fill with working class people like myself. Um, I be, I've been called a developer quite a bit recently. I'm not a developer. I don't have a financial backing. I don't have a team of attorneys. Bill's my uncle. Um, I don't have any coworkers. I don't have a bank partnership. Uh, I don't have money from wealthy people. Uh, I'm a concerned local citizen. Uh, I'm in the construction industry. I renovate houses mostly. Um, I'm putting my chips in, contributing what I can um, to try to help fight a worthy cause. Uh, and I, I would say it's an essential uh, cause. Uh, we have a very serious housing crisis here on Cape Cod that everyone in this room knows. Um, I'm trying to do the right thing with the property um, that I was lucky to purchase. Uh, it would be much simpler, quicker, and probably more profitable to make uh, a million dollar house with this property. But I know we need housing, and so that's what I'm trying to do with it. Um, and we need a lot of housing, and we need it quick. Um, I recommend everyone, if they have a chance, to read the new study by the Concord Group. Um, it estimates that 800 families earning below the $100,000 a year mark will leave Cape Cod every year for the foreseeable future due to lack of housing. This is death by a thousand cuts. The re uh, region's rental housing stock is 99% occupied currently, and it's getting worse, which seems almost impossible. So density, when done right, can start to fix this. Density has the ability to create a community, something I feel that's missing um, quite a bit recently. I'd like to recognize my neighbors in Pinewood Village as a perfect example of how such density has allowed for the affordable creation of a small community. Pinewood Village is my abutter to the east. It's 16 single family homes that all share one lot. So if you, that backs into 5,000 square feet of land per house. I think it's wonderful. I think everyone that lives in Pinewood Village would probably say it's wonderful. The benefits Pinewood Village enjoys thanks to that density is exactly what I hope to replicate next door. Density helps absorb the cost of creating housing, especially now with the cost going through the roof. This savings eventually gets passed on to the residents, whether they're in condos like Pinewood Village or they're in apartments. Um, this property will be a shining star of West Harwich which already has so much to offer. The north side needs some improvement. My hope is that this, uh, this decision will be a no-brainer. This proposal isn't just about this housing project. It's about the sustained economic vitality of this region, and it's our region where we live. Uh, <coughs> one final comment is the 1871 school committee report uh, regarding this building this structure says, the future success of the town lies in the hands of the rising generation. Our rising generation currently has nowhere to live, and they are leaving. The entire town is trying to fix this problem, and I respectfully recommend that we start tonight. Uh, thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, okay, so we can go through the, uh, the plan itself. So the, uh, the, uh, the base proposal is to create uh, seven one-bedroom units uh, in the old school building. Uh, John plans on uh, uh, lifting the building, putting a new foundation under it. Uh, that will enable him to use the lower level uh, for living space as well. Uh, the, um, uh, as you can see, he's, he's got the parking plan done. On this, I assume you all have the site plan, and the you know, the town had their engineer review it, <clears throat> and the um, so the the engineers recommended that uh, uh, the applicants request to waive the hydrologic impact it is not within the because it's not within the water protection district. They agree with that request. Uh, uh, they want the engineer to add symbols to all the preliminary site plan and, and plan of land sheets, and we'll do that uh, with the next version. The, uh, they want uh, the legend of all symbols on the preliminary site plan and plan of land sheets, and we'll do that as well. The, um, they're complaining about the locust map. I guess we need... Uh, a bigger, I can, I can revise that. A, a bigger point for that. 
the uh, uh, we have not done uh, surface drainage calculations, uh, as John indicated. Um, he's not exactly on a shoestring, but you know that costs a lot of money. He wants to get a feel from the members of the planning board uh, as how they feel about this project, uh, and with a positive feeling, then he, then he'll be prepared to go forward and and uh, have his engineer uh, do all the drainage surface calculations that the engineers uh, are recommending. The, uh, they've also uh, agreed with the request to waive the project lighting. They want sidewalk level lighting uh, as called for on the preliminary pan plans, but the, you know, the, the bigger project lighting is they don't think is required. Uh, and then with regard to specifications, details, and cross sections for fencing, curbing, sidewalk lighting, and wheel stops, again, uh, as they say, upon approval of this first submittal. So we're hoping, uh, not for an approval, but for guidance tonight that will indicate uh, that, A, you think the project is a good one, and let us know what concerns you might have about it and what changes we can bring to it. Uh, you know, it will enable John to move forward to provide the additional information that will complete the site plan. Very good. So that would be our, our presentation and, and uh, see if you have any questions. Why don't we uh, hear from Paul and get the staff report. Thanks. Um, Shale has prepared a, um, a staff report that the board received in your packets. Um, being my second day, I, I didn't really um, uh, drill into this too deeply, but I do have some comments that I'd like to share with the board. Great. Um, the applicant has requested a number of waivers from strict compliance of information that needs to be provided, usually is provided, and is required. Um, it would be helpful, I think, to the applicant to get feedback from the board tonight on which things the board is willing to waive and what, what things the board um, believes should be required and provided in revised plans um, so that he can um, get going with his engineers and, and revise the plans to move the project forward. Um, I'm glad to see a project that, that does help to address the, the housing crisis um, on the Cape. Uh, there's a housing crisis in, in all of eastern Massachusetts, and um, I think we're all aware of it. Um, but when it comes down to where that housing is going to be built, it's often controversial, and um, density is often controversial. Um, but um, this gentleman has, has uh, um, responded to requests for proposals, and he's um, uh, purchased the property, and, and he's, he's in now, and, and um, has an interest in moving forward. Uh, regarding the waiver request, the board did receive uh, uh, a letter from the consulting engineer from VHB commenting on some of the waiver requests. Um, the stormwater management, the stormwater calculations, um, I believe should be required. I believe that's what the engineer recommended. Um, we need to make sure that uh, the parking lot's not going to flood, that the water that sheds off of the building, uh, the new building, um, will be accommodated on the site, and that no water will leave the site and impact any neighbors. And so that's kind of a standard requirement for any, any site plan. I can work with um, Mr. Carey to provide some of the details that are required on the <coughs> site plan, like uh, fence details, curbing, lighting, wheel stops. These are all things that um, we can, we can, um, I can assist him in finding cut sheets of materials, of, of what materials he would like to use um, for the project. And I understand that, that this is something that a lot of people are reluctant to, to, to want to do, but later on when he has to figure out what it's actually going to cost to build this, He's going to need to know what those materials are going to be. And, and, and there's a big difference in cost between the materials. And I think the planning board and the neighborhood also has an interest in knowing what those materials will be. I'll throw out an example. 
Um, instead of a, a, a galvanized chain link fence, I think we'd all probably rather see um, a white vinyl fence or a wood stockade fence, something that will fit, fit in better with the neighborhood. So something like that, you know, you need to go to a, um, you can go to Home Depot or a catalog, provide us with a cut sheet of, of how you would like that fence or that lighting um, on the ground or <coughs> wall pack lighting that might be on the building above a doorway. Those are all the kinds of details that are typical to a site plan review that I believe the applicant should provide. Uh, the hydrologic impact statement is, is likely not needed or required because the project's not in the Water Resource Protection District. Given the number of units proposed, um, a traffic study really isn't, isn't needed because we don't see the, the trip generation um, uh, that would cause traffic impacts in the neighborhood. The consulting engineer um, recommended waiving this as well. Um, the parking lot lighting, um, that's, it's up for discussion on, on how the lighting should be. I understand the value of um, um, the dark night sky and an interest of the residents to try to um, minimize um, light pollution. Um, but there are places that we need to have lighting to, to make it safe for people, um, particularly at, you know, like, is there a, a street light in the area of the, the driveway to the building? so that people will be able to see their turn safe and make that turn safely. So um, that's a balancing act between, um, you know, not too much lighting, but enough lighting to, to make the people that um, live there feel safe uh, and, and make it convenient for them. Uh, Section 400-6 of the, the bylaw allows the planning board to grant waivers of strict compliance if they determine that uh, the waiver is in the public interest. The board cannot grant a waiver, shouldn't grant a waiver because it's cost prohibitive for it to be a small project. So these, I wanted to make clear to the applicant that, that the board can waive certain things, but the bylaw is clear that there needs to be a public interest in, in doing so. Um, so that's one of the things that I think the board, when I'm done, um, should have an open discussion about, about the waivers. The site plan, um, is, it says it's a preliminary plan, and it, it's a good start, but it does need um, to have some more details provided, um, and we can work with the applicant on, on what that should be. Landscaping shows three, um, three new trees, uh, uh, dogwood trees and maiden grass. Um, I'm, I couldn't tell from the site plan if there was any existing landscaping, um, and it's, it's often helpful to know, you know what's existing and what's proposed. Um, it's, it's usually a good idea to try to um, provide some kind of a mix or diversity in plant materials. Um, I don't know whether dogwood trees are drought resistant and salt tolerant, and those are a couple of criteria that we should look at in all landscape plantings um, for this region. Um, the size, type, and location of all landscape plantings should be provided uh, uh, on the plans, um, any new trees need to be a minimum of, um, I haven't actually looked on the bylaw, but the standard is usually a minimum of two and a half inch caliper um, at about this high. So that should be specified in the plan so that we don't end up with some twigs in the ground um, that are, will take 30 years to grow up. Um, one of the um, letters received from in a butter m made a recommendation about some plantings along the edge of the parking lot. And I looked in the zoning bylaw, and it actually mentions that in an effort to screen parking areas and to, um, to provide some screening for headlights from people that are pulling in and out of the parking lot. If there's a, like a row of shrubs or something, that will help to minimize um, uh, off-site light impacts to the neighborhood. Um, I talked a little bit about the lighting. Um, we, we need to know what's, what's proposed and the height. Uh, if there are going to be any new um, light poles, th those those should be specified the type and um, they shouldn't be any higher than 20 feet to try to contain that light on the site and, and prevent overspill. Talked about the fence. Um, the subject property is a pre-existing non-conforming lot. It's, um, it's smaller than what's required, the 40,000 square feet in that zoning district. It's an old piece of town property with an old school building. Um, and uh, when it was built, the 25-foot sideline setback probably wasn't even in place. Um, so the property's non-conforming with respect to lot area and, and the um, setback of the existing building. There is going to be a, a new building proposed, 
and that's going to increase the intensity or the use of the property. And um, I need to have a, a follow-up conversation with the building commissioner about whether or not um, that's going to trigger the need for a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals to, to make a change or an alteration, or in this case, um, a more intensive use of a pre-existing non-conforming lot. Um, and so that's important for us to, um, to try to determine now so that Mr. Carey will know um, if he needs to apply for a special permit from the Zoning Board. Um, we did receive some comments from um, a couple of neighbors that mentioned that there was a vein of uh, contamination that ran underneath the site. Um, that's something that I want to have a follow-up conversation with um, the Director of Public Health. I need to determine whether or not there are any activity or use restrictions on the property that might have been recorded in connect connection with any contamination. Um, so I need to do a little bit of a follow-up there. Um, I mentioned the stormwater management and needing that. And um, the last thing comment I have is that we did receive um, some comments from uh, neighborhood residents, um, including one that came in just uh, just this evening. And um, not sure how the board wants to handle that. Whether you want to read these into the record or just um, you know make note of them that they had been received. I'm not sure how you handle that kind of thing. But um, those are my comments on the project, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, well, if I could. If I could just respond to, to well before we get to that, I just I want to um, make sure that we have you may as well take it from all of us, right? I mean, um, unless you have an objection to it, no, it's not an objection. It, it's an explanation of the pollution, right? So, the uh, uh, there was a a laundromat in Dennis, right? Court, and they put their effluent into the groundwater. Uh, there was a site test done on this property that showed that at 20 feet, uh, there's no sign of that uh, you know, soap, basically. Uh, and you have to go down to 50 feet before you find it. So we don't think that uh, whether it exists or not, I mean, there's no, there's no activity use limitation on the property. Okay, right. So, just don't want to answer that question right away. That's well, the thing, and I, but I think the the point is due diligence on the town's point is that there have been positive and negative tests that I'm aware of over the last 30 years there, and the last test I think it was in 2017, 2016, I don't know. like that. There was a, a you know, it cleared then, but then there was some other hubbub that came up. So, I mean, I think we ought to just well, get it all out on the table, you know, and just. I mean, nobody's objecting to it. it. wasn't, you know, a concern when it was discharged by the town. But I mean, this is the opportunity to know where we all stand. So uh, that was his point of due diligence. So um, the board, would anybody like to step up first? Any questions? I know there are obviously some questions. Well, I do have a question on the plume. Um, I'd just like an answer from the board of health. Yeah, definitely need an answer on that. Because there was a corner mat only two lots away from there. Right. There was what? Sorry, there was a corner mat two lots away. Right, uh, and that's and that's the source of the probably the source of the plume. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah but it's as I indicated, there's no AUL activity use limitation right. on the property. We right. just need to we get did a title search, and there was nothing Florida there. Right. Uh, so, but you know, happy to. You know, I mean, I, uh, John has told me that the uh, uh, the. Laundromat is no longer in business, so I don't know if it's going to come back again. There's a lawyer's office right there now. <laughs> Beg your pardon? There's a lawyer's office there right now. <laughs> well, it's a different kind of pollution. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Is, the, is that something, uh, a study, something that we would like to have done since if it was five or six years ago? I think we ought to know what the study the, du the duration, the validity, yeah. you know, all that stuff. And I don't think this is like a super big red flag. I mean, it's just, it is something that's been dangling out there. And, you know, in fact, it was an obstruction to a previous attempt for the town to discharge the property, like, yeah, in 2017. Yeah. So it was like a big obstacle. People didn't, so let's just get it off the table. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Just clarify it. Get, you know, th they wouldn't have sold it if it was a problem, but let's just get it on record, so. Yeah. Uh, we're being asked tonight to what? Give a 
these feasible. waivers. Yeah, and, waiver, are, right. are you asking for the waivers tonight, or are we? Well, I think we've yeah, got. Because I hear you said you wanted, how do we feel about it? It's like, what's our action tonight? Well, I think the action is we've got to clarify, tease out right. in the um, proposal the things that we can go ahead with, things that there may be some, need some discussion. Um, and as you all know, I, just as the, this is the place where we probably ought to do it, we ought to read those letters into the um, into record. The um, and did everybody receive the record, the letters um, prior that were in the package from last week? Okay, yep. because there were some things that I definitely want to have brought up in discussion. Just this is the time, and um, these are the, I mean, I, I don't want to be reading them in, but does it, does, can I have a volunteer to read in the uh, letter from, the, uh, from Ken Vichello? Paul, maybe you could read that into us, to the record for us. From another case. Yeah, that's first. Oh, excuse me. I, what was the one here? Oh, it's right here. Staple. That's right. That was Baskin Holland. So I see one from um, Mahoney's. The Mahoney's, and then there's also Carol Lehrer. Yeah. yeah. And a couple others came in. Yeah, and two others. Alan, four letters. Alan mm -hmm. Langton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think we ought to definitely read them all. Well, we ought to read them. So, yeah. I mean, let's get them in. All right. How many read one? Please, I would love it. So okay. Step right up. All right. Uh, this is a letter dated, an email dated Wednesday, December 7th. Uh, and it is from William and Maria Mahoney. We, William and Maria Mahoney, are abutters to 5 Bells Neck Road, West Harwich. <clears throat> we have been owners at 9 Bells Neck Road, Pinewood Village, since 1978. Here we offer our comments regarding the redevelopment of the historic schoolhouse at 5 Bells Neck Road. Uh, number one, although being touted as a restoration project, this is in fact a complete gut with an added dormer and brand new structure all covered in vinyl. The historic building is in no way being honored, and the plan has a new building right on the easterly property line. It appears this project is not a restoration of a historically significant building. Additionally, there will be an extensive enlargement of asphalt in the parking area to accommodate likely 20 vehicles, since a one-bedroom apartment can accommodate two-plus individuals in guest parking. <coughs> Excuse me. Number two, the site is less than 0.2 miles from a Renet renowned protected wetlands and conservation area. The introduction of more asphalt will likely negatively impact that area as well as drainage and other environmental concerns. Has a feasibility study been conducted? If not, when? If yes, when will the town make the findings public? Number three, the proposed rents of $2,000 per month for a one-bedroom apartment far exceeds the current market rate. This does not alleviate the affordable housing crisis on Cape Cod. Therefore, it is likely that the owner will petition the town to change zoning to affordable housing or seasonal worker housing status. Number four, with the updated idea of building 10 apartments, this is in excess of 20 plus year round tenants occupying basement space, attic space, and an outbuilding space. The town of Harwich cannot entertain tenement like housing in this lovely retirement resort town in the important Captions Road district. The negative environmental impacts informs, impact in forms of water use and wastewater removal, traffic patterns and emissions has not been released. Has it been studied? Uh, number five years ago, the town discovered a toxic vein underground on this site prohibiting development and condemning a private well abutting Five Bells Neck Road. Have those findings been ignored? Has current current testing been scheduled? If not, how is the town or develop, developer builder deeming the site toxic free and safe for disrupting the earth with no harmful effects therein? When will such changing, cha when will such findings be released? We are completely opposed to Mr. Carey's significant, significant expansion, 100% of his initial proposal of four to six units as a recap. This site simply cannot support 10 units. The outbuilding encroaches on the easterly property line. There is zero preservation of the historical building. There is a toxic vein underground. Excessive asphalt creates negative environmental impact. Proposed rent unrealistic, unrealistic exceeds local economic opportunities. 
and no precedent in town for tenement type housing. His best regards, William and Maria Mahoney. Submitted December 7th, 2022, 4.45 p.m. Do you, you want to keep on a roll here? I was gonna look for another volunteer. I can do okay, great. I'll, I'll take uh, Carol Lehrer's email from Monday, December 12th at 10.12 a.m. A. <coughs> Um, it reads, I received John Kerry's letter concerning the December 13th, 2022 public hearing to take place during the December 13th Harwich Planning Board meeting. I read the documents online that he has submitted. <clears throat> I will not be able to attend the meeting in person, but I'm submitting the following questions concerning some of the site plan waiver requests. Number one, will the sidewalk lighting be ground level lights and not up on posts that would light up the entire area? Number two, the row of dogwood trees along the road looks good. Have you considered planting a row of shrubs at car headlight level in front of the trees to assist in limiting light and noise from traveling to nearby areas? Number three, are you asking to waive the requirements to provide surface straighting calculations and plans? Please describe how you will ensure any parking lot flooding won't spread flooding to neighboring areas. Number four, you're asking to waive the requirement to provide fencing specification details, etc. Please describe what type of fencing materials you plan on using and how, how high it will be. Number five, what are the shortest and longest rental lease terms you plan to offer? Number six, as you specify in your project narrative, this project is a conversion to year, uh, quote, conversion to <coughs> year round multifamily housing, end quote, and your stamped site plan indicates one bedroom e in each one of the 10 apartments. What is the maximum number of permitted permanent residents allowable per apartment? Thank you for submitting my questions. Thank you. We have two more. Uh, right? Or one more. Uh, I think two more. Uh, let's see. <coughs> we have the Longton Pinewood Village Condo. Alan Longton. Yep. Anyone care to read that? Anybody please? volunteer? I volunteer you. Okay. <laughs> well, I, it's pretty small to read. Okay. We can do I mean, it. Right all right, go, ahead, go for it. Whoever. Yeah, can I can do it. Okay. <laughs> all right, December 12th, 2022, to the Harwich Planning Board. Mrs. Ms. Delaney, I'm writing to express my opposition to the apartment complex proposed development at 5 Bells Neck Road. I purchased 9 Bells Neck Road, Unit 11, on September 1st, 2022. During the process of acquiring this residence, my realtor, Linda Walsh, had spoken to the developer in July and informed me <coughs> this was a four to five unit restoration project of the West Harwich Schoolhouse. I recently learned in an article published September 21st, 2022 in the Cape Cod Chronicle that when the developer acquired the property, it was presented as four apartments. The article goes on to explain how it will be converted into seven apartments. Then on November 4th, 2022, the developer submitted plans for 10 apartments. This amount of development to the proximity of Unit 11 in Pinewood Village would have significantly impacted the decision-making process of acquiring this home. The proposed second building appears to be approximately 25 feet from my property. I spoke with the developer last week of October when he was doing some patchwork on the roof. He stated he was experience, experiencing delays with the town and getting permitted. I find it dishonest that he submitted his request after his concert conversation and at a time when most residents are not in the neighborhood and challenged to show up to the December 13th meeting in person. The developer is clearly not being upfront and honest, especially when we, the Pinewood Village, were willing to help support a four to five unit development with a water easement that developer neglected to mention had grown to 10 units. The Cape Cod Chronicle article describes previous attempts to renovate the property was thwarted by a major vein of pollution run, running under the property. Has this pollution been removed? Is there testing scheduled to deem the site toxic free? The West Harwich Schoolhouse property is located in a single family residential neighborhood. It's about 0.25 miles to the Bells Neck Conservation Land. 
has a feasibility study been conducted to the environmental impact of this quiet neighborhood and conservation land? The Baxter Nye Engineering and Surveying Site plans state that it does not appear to be near an area of critical environmental concern. How is that determined? What impact does this 10-unit apartment complex have on the state designated IWPA zone? The 400 neighborhood study shows that these are all private residences. The site plan utility locations are approximate and excavation likely required. Will there be a utility interruptions at the Pinewood Village condominium? Is my understanding that the town of Harwich viewed this project as a restoration project of an 1871 schoolhouse historic preservation? If you would please look at the south and east elevation drawings on drawing A, 200. How does this look like a historical 1871 schoolhouse? Same on drawing A201 and the west elevation with added dormer. I'm not seeing a historical 1871 schoolhouse. The use of vinyl siding will further cover up this historical 1871 schoolhouse. Regarding the second building, how does this enhance the restoration of the 1871 schoolhouse? Site. I am perplexed as to why the town of Harwich would want to move forward with this project. The proposal is more than double the initial scope and will likely end up with zoning to accommodate affordable housing or seasonal working housing status. This has the potential for an increase in drug use and crime that unfortunately is experienced in Hyannis. I am not opposed to the development, but the proposal before us is not for the betterment of Harwich and it will lower property values in the area. Respectfully, Alan Blonkton, and it's signed President Pinewood Village Condominium Association. Thank you. And we have one more. I don't have it in my, my folder here. If there's a fourth. Is there a fourth? <coughs> Is that it? That's Carol. That's she it? said it just came in. You were the first I heard about it. Was the comment that just came in tonight for this, or was it for? For um, Stonehorse. For Stonehorse, okay. 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 All right, so then it was only three then. Yep. All right. Well, so we've got a bunch of stuff out of the table, and I think the, the premise here is to see for us to determine the validity, ask the applicant about, you know, some of the issues that have popped up, and this is the time to ask and start getting some uh, resolution and seeing how we're going to move ahead on this. So I don't know who would like to, if anybody has any initial questions based on what we've already just heard, we'll be open up to the public. Can I ask a question? Please. So the neighbors and whatever, there's this movement from four to six units to ten. Can you um, talk about that? Well, I think the, uh, uh, has to do with the ability of the project to support itself. So it's the, you need more to make the cost, right. to lift the building and all of the other things that need right. to be done. It's a question of profitability. Right. It's profitability. Feasibility. Um, it's gonna so make, it has to make money. Yeah, when I was originally gonna buy the property, I was gonna just leave it as is, redo it, and put units in there, kind of bare bones. Um, the structure foundations, there's nothing there. It's brick sitting on sand. So lift up the structure, put a new foundation, put it back down, so it's gonna last another 50 years, 100 years. Uh, it's $200,000. Um, so once you're doing that, then all of a sudden, your costs are, they just pile up. So you're at a million dollars, and all of a sudden, four units doesn't pay for a million dollars. Four okay. units doesn't pay for a million dollars. So then you need to find a way to make this project work because you can't build it if it's going to lose money. Um, and so the plan you know, with my engineers and based on the site, um, we arrived at a 10-unit plan that made the project viable. So that, that's <coughs> that was the evolution. That explains the change. Does the planning board have any um, position on these extra three, or is that? Well, it's like seven plus three, right? Right. So you yeah. basically we want from seven in the main building. So you want... That from four to seven yep. four plus to three. Plus yep. three. Right. And is and you need the three to also make it viable. Correct, yeah. Right. And is the the <coughs> the three is all new build? Uh the three would be a new structure, yeah. Right. So what's our what's our role in that? So the legalities, do you wanna tell us about the legalities of a new structure on a, a existing on conforming? Yeah. We're going to have to go through like a probably a much more fin finely grained build plan, right? Site plan. 
I mean, that's just the the bottom line. The, the bylaws. So, um, so um, because the property uh, doesn't meet the minimum lot size requirements for that zoning district, the the lot itself is considered a pre-existing non-conforming lot. There are other, there's a, a sideline setback that doesn't comply with the current 25 foot sideline setback. It's an old building built long before uh, the town had adopted any zoning. So um, this makes this property and the existing structure pre-existing non-conforming. Typically when you want to um, make a, an addition or an alteration to a pre-existing non-conforming structure, or in this case, um, a more intensive use of a pre-existing non-conforming lot because there's a second building proposed, oftentimes that will trigger um, a trip to the Zoning Board of Appeals to request a special permit for expansion or alteration of a pre-existing non-conforming use or structure. So I, I had a very brief conversation with the Building Commissioner this afternoon about it and um, we agreed that we should talk some more about it later and that's something that um, that the board and the applicant you know would need to know going forward so that there's a, a clear understanding of the permitting path for the project right uh, mr. chairman I just very briefly I was involved as you know next next case <laughs> uh, with Stonehorse right and the uh, uh, and at that time, of course, different administration, uh, we needed a, a use variance because we were creating a dormitory. Right. Uh, but all the other changes we were proposing were uh, just part of the special permit approval by this board. Okay. So I don't know, you know, I'd like to have that conversation with Jack Mee to see what he what he thinks that was Ray Chesley's take on it at that time so right. well this is where I, we're into 48 hours with the new planet so there's gonna be a little yeah. slippage here and we want to make sure that everybody's you know kind of moving along but right. let's John yeah and there's a footnote in the new multifamily zoning that allows for pre-existing right. lots under 40,000 square feet right. okay <clears throat> mr. chairman yes Chair. and Great. will that uh, second new structure uh, be in compliance for all the things the existing structure is not, i.e. setback and so on and so it forth? It would meet all dimensional requirements. Okay. I have a question. Could, there's, in these letters, there's a, a, a multitude of questions related to this being positioned as a restoration project. Right. Could, Please. There, could I have some background on that or? Yeah, let's, let's bring up that because I think yes. there's some ambiguity here or perceptual because I'm sure did everybody get a chance to see the what was presented here I think the, some of the reverb was in the, the paper did you all I'm assuming you guys saw it right did everybody see it in the, the board oh yeah so, I saw it basically Bill copied the application correct <laughs> so but I think what it did was in the compression there there was a, a kind of pot well as in all kinds of um, compressions as a kind of distortion. And I think that's what probably prompted some questions about um, uh, preservation. Like, for instance, one was, um, at, two of the people talked about um, vinyl siding. Do, I mean, well, the technology has changed, you know, it's like, well, why currently, don't you talk about that? There's currently vinyl siding on the building now. Yeah. Right, but that's not preservation, it's not historical. I, so well, yeah, I can speak to it. Yeah. Um, so when the town sold it, um, they uh, they had priorities, and one of them was historic preservation of the structure. Um, we spoke with the historic um, commission, and they deemed the building was not, the elements of the structure were not historic. The only thing historic was the structure itself. So the vinyl siding, the windows, the trim, the doors, um, the roof, there was nothing historic about the structure other than the structure being where it sits and the size of it. Um, so because of that, there was no historic preservation deed restricting anything. Uh, what I did um, promise to do, um, and there's nothing um, that forces me to do it, I just want to do it, is keep the structure as close to what it would have been in its entirety, which is why the buildings don't touch. It's easier, cheaper, 
and probably permitting better if I, if I attach the buildings, then I think it takes away from the historic significance of that main structure. So I'm happy to do whatever you guys want. Yeah, and the, if I could also address that, the, um, one of the things that uh, historic preservationists talk about when we go to historic commissions to modify uh, existing historic structures is that uh, changes are all right if they're changes that uh, would have been made or could have been made uh, as, the, as the building aged along. So uh, dormers, for instance, are a classic form of enlarging a structure without really changing it. And so uh, John's using dormers uh, to get additional uh, living space. You know, you know, doors change because we have you know, requirements of the, of the building code and the health code. So you can't really keep the same doors. But the, so what, what the Historic Commission said to John is none of the elements of the structure are historically significant. You know, the trim, the doors, the windows. Um, but the structure itself, its size, and, and you know, and how it was used previously, that makes it historic. So the idea is um, what changes can John make to the structure that don't destroy that one aspect? And I think, I think John's uh, proposals of using dormers rather than uh, you know, ripping the roof off and adding a third story. I mean, that, you know, so, uh, so he's trying to honor the structure without uh, giving up the project. Well, I, I just thought it was, you know, would, um, I guess it's uh, image A200 and A201, uh, which are the elevations. To me, I mean, if these are what you intend to do, to me, this is what honoring the spirit of what was built um, with this one caveat. I was a little bit, personally, I just think it's a little odd to find a solar array street facing on the south facade. That was, to me, kind of the one kind of big red flag. It's like, okay, we've got this fabulous Model T, but we want to drop in this Tesla battery, um, and you're going to have to see it. It's like oh. that to me is like one of our so something that just kind of like blows up in my head. But well, you know, in the you know, and I've been involved in this kind of discussion before, in the the uh, and no disrespect to old guys because I'm one, but the careful <laughs> the. Uh, every conversation I've had about this where a client is proposing uh, a solar array on the roof and there are objections to it because, you know, there are no other solar arrays in the neighborhood. I'm talking about certain Chatham neighborhoods. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the applicant, who's typically a younger person, right. Says, I can't believe they're opposed to, you know, uh, helping reduce our, uh, climate change. So, you know, if that's a serious objection and the board wanted us to reconsider it, we'd certainly reconsider it. But sort of that's, you know. You know. To me, it's less about that. It's the anachronism that's involved. You're putting like two like a 19th century aesthetic with a 21st century tech overlay in direct conflict. Well, so the I, spirit I of their kind of preservational thing, that's for my, I mean, I'm not trying to make anybody's case here. I'm just saying, look, this is part of the stuff that we want to talk about. I'm putting this one out there. Yeah, no, so and, just as a, we'd, like know, to hear, yeah, we'd like to hear everybody's right. opinion. Greg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the things I'm a little bit confused about is your explanation that you just gave about the historic preservation, not the, <clears throat> I don't know the terminology you use, not the facade or anything, but the structure itself. Um, but if I recall correctly, the RFP requested but did not require historic preservation. Right. Am I close no, to correct on that? Yeah, so no, how does that fit into the explanation you, you gave? I'm well, just 
Right. Sort of it's, really, it's really the explanation that John gave. So he met with the Historic Commission. Right. And they said none of the elements of the building are historic. What's historic is the size and shape of the building. And so, I mean, the elements are, uh, you guys know more about building than I do, but you know, the trim, the, the windows, the way the doors look, I mean, all that, those are the elements. And, and the, uh, in some properties, you know, some of the properties along the south side of Route 28 there in, in West Harwich, I mean, you know, some of the details are really magnificent and you would never want to see them change. Here, you know, we, don't, we don't have that. So that was the... Uh, so I'm just curious, and it's not a question to you, but I'm curious as to why the selectmen, when they put out the RFP, would have said preferences for historic preservation. I'm wondering what they well, were I'll thinking. tell you what, because I remember. Remember okay. in uh, the 2019 uh, town meeting, when this was the second go around to discharge the property to sell it. And the first time, first time around like 2017 or 2018, it didn't go. The second time, the stipulation was for historic preservation as the premise that this was going to be, you know, part of it. And then the RFP goes out and says, we would prefer this, but right. it's not a stipulation, right? And then there was a, a, a next item. So it's like, it's kind of gotten watered down. So it is, there's a kind of, if you want to go backwards, you're going to find different things at different stages along the way here. So, you know, I don't think we necessarily want to do an archaeology of the language of the town over the course of the last five years. But if we do have, you know, a commitment to the, you know, proportional and detailing that I see in the drawing, it's like, that's a great start. So, I mean, uh, I think the density issue is probably also going to be, you know, th there's obviously some controversy over that. Um, but, you know, the flip side argument that you made is very clearly, too, is that this is an antidote to having part of the problem is building single family units on, you know, large lots. It forces every price upward. It, it makes it almost impossible to do, you know, affordable kind of things. Or, so, I mean, it's a, it's a whipsaw thing. So it, this is an interesting pro dilemma. And, you know, um, if we don't have any additional questions, I, I'd like to open up to the public, but you all have the prerogative to ask questions now. Well, so Jim and I got one question. Yeah. Bill. Um, when you jack, jack the house up and put the new foundation under it, uh, are you going to do the top foot and a half, two feet with brick? Or are you just going to do concrete? Just concrete. Okay. Yeah. Brick, um, while it looks nice, it's a maintenance item. Uh, it's a cost item. Um, I know all about this it. This project <laughs> is expensive, right. and I can't be adding bells and whistles. We're trying to keep the cost down, not drive them up. And has it gone to historic yet? I mean, with historic on the 20th, I met with them when I was originally buying it. Um, the property, in summary, is not historic. It's significant because it's older than 100 years. The Massachusetts Historic Society has deemed it not significant enough, and it's not a historic place. Um, my main interest is that people in the town want it preserved. I think it's a beautiful building. I'd like to preserve it. And that's the main reason why this preservation conversation is happening. But there's nothing actually insisting that it happens. So, but Bill, what, what you're talking about is simply facing the visible portion of the foundation with brick. Brick, yes. Well, we'll, we'll talk about it. You can put a little ledger on there and just do the top right. part. Yeah, we'll talk part about before. it. Greg? Thank you. As a follow-on to Bill's question about the, the foundation, I suspect the foundation now is pro or, or the the cellar the height of this the existing cellar is probably less than nine feet and you're going to make it nine feet with the the new foundation if in fact that's correct um, what does that do to the overall height of the structure and are we still at, i think the zoning re maximum height is 30 feet <coughs> 40 40 40 so the structure is at 36 37 feet there's no basement there's a two-foot sand crawl space. Um, the foundation goes about three inches below the sand, which is crazy, it hasn't moved. Um, I'll put a full nine-foot foundation. I'll lift the building probably an additional two feet and probably slope the, the grade appropriately. 
um, to hopefully get better light uh, in the basement units. The basement units will be full height. They're, they won't be basement units. They'll be very nice. So, yeah, so the, it'll raise, so you'll be about I'll be under the 40. a foot or two a foot under the 40. For sure. No, we're five feet under the. No, we'll, we'll end up being um, about a, two feet under the 40 yeah, foot threshold. It's, it's, it's go. everything, go everything moves, but yeah. yeah. They'll end up being about two feet taller. Thank you. I do have a follow up, yeah. Thank you. Uh, not on that subject. But I just want to go on record as saying, because um, we talked a little bit about density, and I'm very much in favor of a project like this. I think that's what you're looking for, the right. feeling of the board. I speak for myself. Um, we haven't obviously voted on anything. Um, and understanding that density is an issue for people, but I think that's the way we're going to have to go um, to meet our affordable housing requirements. Um, so I'm in favor of the, the project overall, but I think there are a lot of details that we need to work out. Um, and as Ben discussed, you know, we're, we're gonna come back with this with, with more detail, uh, more detail in the building construction or reconstruction. Um, one of the other questions I had is the, I guess it's the, the back of the property, which abuts the driveway into Pinewood. Right. Is that the back of the, or where's the it's front the back and the back? In the northern side of the property, okay. about Pinewood's driveway. Okay. Um, there are uh, huge old pine trees, probably within five feet of the structure along that driveway. I assume those are on this property. They're not. They're on. Um, and some of the branches on those pine trees are hanging over onto the roof of this existing structure, mm -hmm. and you're going to put a dormer on top of it. Is that going to require taking down some of those trees and or lopping off all the branches that are on the side of the proposed? Well, I can tell you, I mean, if the trees are not on our property, then you know, we don't have the ability, the right to take them down. If the branches extend over the property line, then we have a right to remove the branches to the property line. But what we would do is because the insurance company wants the branches away from the roof as well. Sure, right. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll work with an arborist to uh, remove the branches in a manner that uh, keeps the insurance company happy uh, and does the best we can to preserve the health of the tree. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? Um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. so it seems like um, I would like to also say I'm in favor of a, uh, a solutions that create density and uh, work within the structure. But there seem to be lots of questions to make this viable related to adding the three apartments and everything else. So it doesn't seem, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, that we have anything to vote on tonight? No, you don't. We don't, but I okay. think we get a general kind of idea of where, idea. Where, we, where we stand. You know, and I think that some of these waivers as we've already heard from the planner, like make a lot of sense. I think this hydrogeologic issue is something we've got to look at again. And, you know, I mean, and the, the parking lot thing, the, the, the lighting thing, is it gonna be, you know, something we can talk about too. But um, again, and then I think uh, the health commissioner, um, health agent had said that, you know, the input is gonna be forthcoming. So we really don't have something to vote on, but you know, you're getting a pretty good idea of here where things stand. I'd like to ask, we have a room full of people here. If there are anybody who would like to address the board, I invite you to please come up, you know, state your name and address and write it down. And of course, glad to hear anybody wants to weigh in. So, let's see if we can get it. Thank you. From this table to these people, and then we should have everybody's support before we finish. Thank you, Mr. Chair and the committee. Uh, Jeff Handler here of Harwich, and uh, Paul, I'd like to welcome you aboard. Thank you. Very uh, happy to, to see you here tonight. Uh, in full disclosure, I am a member of the local planning committee charged with developing the next 10-year plan for the local comprehensive plan for the town of Harwich. But tonight I speak uh, as a resident of the town of Harwich in full support of this project. And if I may, Mr. Chair, there's an awful lot to unpack here. Uh, and there's an awful lot of opportunity here as well for our town. And also in full disclosure, I have spent time 
with Mr. Carey, and I have looked at the plans, and I have gotten to know him a little bit. And for me, it, it's all about seeking to understand first. And now I do believe I understand the project. And Harwich has been waiting for a project like this for some time. And thanks to Mr. Carey now, he has put it before our town to vote for approval. May not be the perfect project, but I would suggest that it would be the perfect project for the people who would find housing at this location. With respect to the structure, we all understand it's in disrepair. What's also clear and important is to maintain the historic charm and character of this project. Mr. Carey intends on preserving that, that, that the historic nuances of the, of, of the property, both for Harwich and for Captain's Row, which I think is very important. And I do want to address the only criteria I believe, and actually I learned a little something tonight, that the historic is <coughs> recommending but not requesting. Um, we need not talk about what Mr. Carey does to the inside of the building. That's not in the purview of anybody. Right. What he chooses to do with the inside of the building is up to him. Anything he, anything he chooses to do is not in the pur purview of any committee here that I can see. Maybe I'm wrong. With respect to the dormer, I feel it's a small change that will make a tremendous impact. We have three more units. I don't want to lose sight here of the challenges that our town faces with housing, not just our town, Cape Wide or Eastern Mass from what I hear. So I don't want to lose track of that. And I want to make sure that everybody looks at this dormer as three more one-bedroom units. I think that's very important. I've also spoken to a lot of the community. And, and our residents about this project. And not surprisingly, there has been an awful lot of confusion. This is not an affordable housing project. It is not. It's rather a small community of workforce housing, to which to date, that term is still undefined. I believe we're speaking of our blue and our red. I believe we're speaking of our teachers, our town employees. I believe we're speaking about small business managers and, and other professionals that will truly contribute to our town through 12 months. <clears throat> Not just get bussed in here for the summertime rush and then out they go. These are the professional people that will make our town go. That's who will be living in this, in this workforce community. With respect to the economics, and I, there's been a lot already touched on, so I'll, I'll, I'll speed through this. I spent a year gathering data on this exact topic as I've got some projects going along in the town as well. Many have said this is not affordable. Many have said $2,000 is just too much for a one-bedroom apartment. Well, first I would say it's really not your business. You're not the one who's putting their neck on the line and trying to do something for the greater good of the community. But I will back it up with facts because I truly believe we need to deal in facts. I looked at West Bridgewater and Bridgewater and I searched for one-bedroom homes, or one-bedroom apartments, excuse me. Prices range from $1,750 to $2,650 for a one-bedroom in West Bridgewater and Bridgewater. Now, I would say that the $1,800 to $2,100 that Mr. Carey is proposing is about market rate for West Bridgewater, but it is not market rate for Harwich. It is below market rate for Harwich. These units will be full of people who will be contributing to our town. No question about it. This person is attempting, this, this person sitting right in front of me here, Mr. Carey, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> you're attempting to do something very noble for this town and I commend you for the, for the attempt. Uh, and I believe this project should be supported. With respect to density, single, it was already mentioned, a single family home uh, approach to building our way out of this problem is dead in the water before we even begin. It is not going to work. A certain amount of density is required. That is the future for Harwich, like it or not. And this project is a reasonable one. Pinewood Village has proved it. Pinewood Village, 16 units, one to four bedrooms per unit. When I, when I did the research on this, it was a bit staggering, to be quite honest with you. 38 to 48 total bedrooms, potentially. I'm just guessing. I've never been in there. It's a great area. On two acres, 5,000 square feet per home. I mean, this density, that's density. What, what Mr. Carey is doing pales in comparison. And Pinewood Village proves it can work. It proves it can work. What I see here is true opportunity with very, very little downside. 
I see opportunity for potentially 20 hardworking people to gain housing. I see opportunity for local businesses that are struggling desperately for, ha for help to get some relief. I see opportunity for property values in, in West Harwich to increase, not decrease. I, I, I don't see how anybody could come to the idea that property values would decrease if we renovate respectfully this piece of property, this piece of property. I also see some life being breathed back into Captain's Row. I love your approach so far. I, I can't pronounce your last name. I'm not going to try to do it, so I'll call you Mr. Paul. But Mr. Paul, I really like your approach so far tonight, and, and I think it's uh, commendable. I see an opportunity for our town to step up and be a proponent and not an adversary to the very problem that is being discussed weekly at most town department meetings. The time is now for Harwich from the top down to assist and facilitate this gentleman sitting right here in front of us. Then maybe others will see that the town can work professionally and cooperatively with other professionals so that maybe more of us will dip our toe in the water. I see an opportunity to create a working model right now for a system or f for future projects here in Harwich. I've always said the optimist builds the airplane and the pessimist builds the parachutes. Listening to some of these comments tonight, disingenuous comes to mind, as well as an attempt to create fear about this project because they simply don't support it. For anyone to insinuate that there will be an increased drug use or crime and that this will likely become hyannis, first of all, I, I, th th that is wildly inappropriate, pessimistic and very short-sighted. Furthermore, I consider it a scare tactic and a perfect and clear case of not in my backyard. Of course, there will be a few who look at this through the pessimistic lens, but I choose rather to look through the lens of an optimist. If we're going to deal in hypotheticals and crystal balls, let's hypothetically believe that this is going to be a huge win for our town. Who cares about Mr. Carey? Just kidding. But a huge win for our town. Mr. Carey will develop and then manage this property ongoing. <coughs> he told me that. It is not in his best interest to watch this turn into something that is undesirable. I'm a full supporter of this project, whether it was in my backyard or not. Mr. Carey is not going to generate two, is not going to create two generations worth of wealth off this project either, I can assure you. So the people who think he's coming in as a developer and getting rich on this, I would tell you that is not the case. A few last points to consider, if I may, Mr. Chair. The more time, labor, and hurdles that our town places on this, on this gentleman, the higher the rents will go. That will be a very, very unfortunate occurrence. Economics 101, he'll just pass it on to the consumer, and that is not what we should be doing. I know we need a little bit of time for you to get up to speed, but I love how you've approached this so far. If this project does become financially not viable, might we be looking at a 40B in its place? I don't think we'd want that. I think it would double the density, if not more than double. And I think our town, as we all, all already know about 40B projects, we may not even have a say. It's very important for so many reasons that the town support this project. And I feel this is one, that if we can't make this work, Honestly, why bother talking about affordable or workforce housing anymore? This is a layup in my opinion, and this should be the first step in a long journey. But let's not lose sight of the people who could live in this property while we're making our decisions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and the committee for listening. Go, Mr. Carey. Thank you, Mr. Handler. Well, okay, who wants to follow that? <laughs> Please. My name is Tracy Wessels. I live in Pinewood Village year-round, and I would like to speak for the pessimists. Okay. It right. is my backyard. And I love how everybody cites Pinewood Village as a perfect example of great success of density, who has never been there, who have never seen it, who have no idea what they're talking about. I've owned my property at Pinewood Village for 15 years. I do not have a prepared statement because I didn't know how upset I was going to be. I would love to see that old schoolhouse restored. I would love to not have 
booze bottles and cans and needles and all of this trash that's over there now. I would love to see somebody take care of that property. I would also like to not have 20, 30, 40 more cars flying down our private road every day that we have to pay to fix the potholes on. I would also not like to see more drugs and graffiti and broken things in my neighborhood. We have a lot of problem in Pinewood Village with traffic in the summer. Everybody has trouble with traffic in the summer. But it's our road, we pay for it. Are you gonna help me pay for the road? Are you gonna help me fix the road? Are you gonna put up a fence so that when the workers come home at two in the morning from the bars, they're not shining their high beams in my living room or, or my bedroom where I'm trying to sleep? Pinewood Village works because it's 16 units. All of us are not under the same roof, and they're not one bedroom. Mine is one bedroom, but they're not all one bedroom. And I live in it year round. I'm the only one who lives there year round. Everything else is seasonal. We have two rental properties that are occupied year round, and we have one other owner who lives there year round besides me. So. Four families live in those eight, 16 units year round. The rest of them are empty, nine, 10, 12 months a year, no, 10 months a year. So don't go saying, density works, look at Pinewood Village right next door, because you're not building Pinewood Village. You're not gonna have Pinewood Village. Just don't use us as an example when you're out to destroy. Thank you. Anybody else care to uh, address the board? Cindy. I wasn't going to talk tonight, but I just want to kind of reiterate some of what Jeff just said. And again, Mr. Paul, as he's going to call him, we're probably all going to call him Mr. Paul. Thank you for being here. Um, your position we've needed, and the guidance is going to be fantastic. But what Mr. Carey is trying to do, and I appreciate what the woman pre previous just said, but what he is trying to do, and we should be so commending, a young gentleman that wants to give back to his community, take care of a problem that right now none of us are fixing, has come here. Duncan, you know what we've done to save West Harwich with the DCPC. How cool is this? We're going to put back some life and fix some of what we all cherish. I hope you'll all look at this really closely and say thank you to someone that wants to give back and help us. Thanks, Cindy. May, may I one more? Please, by all means. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It, it truly breaks my heart to think that you feel he's going to destroy Pinewood Village. And I would like to offer my opinion on that specific piece of information that you shared with us, because I respect it, I heard it, and it matters. In my run for selectman, there was a discussion about noise in the center or in, in Harwich Port. And my platform was respectful cooperation and discussion. I would urge you to sit with Mr. Carey and find out what you need to feel comfortable. And I can promise you that, oh, and, and I hope so, because, because he needs our permission to do what he wants to do. May, maybe, maybe not, that's not for me to decide, but in my discussions with Mr. Carey, a lot of these topics got, got touched on. And the commitment that he has to working with Pine Village and other rebutters and the rest of the town of Harwich was commendable as far as I was concerned. And I really, I'm, I'm really saddened that, that you feel so strongly about this. And I, I certainly do hope that there's going to be a win-win at the end of the day here. Uh, and that, that's all I have to say. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Handler. So um, where do we stand here? Do we uh, need to continue? As Mr. Uh, Chairman, I have yeah. a couple of questions. Sure, please. Thank you. Um, is the plan to construct the, the new building at the same time as the renovations going on with the, the existing structure? Is that something that comes later? And if so, how much later? Um, so the plan is the phase one will be upgrade all utilities, uh, lift and move the school, place back down and renovate, uh, and then occupy the school. Um, okay. The reason I need the approval for the 10 is because the utilities are about a third the budget and you have to go one way or the other with them. You can't do, you can't do add-ons. The septic has to be sized, the utility sure. has to be sized. Um, I'm alone, I don't have a team, I don't have a company. Um, I'm gonna occupy and fill the first building, make sure it's a success. And then I'm gonna go for a building permit, permit for the second phase. If it's still in my best interest. All I'm asking for now is permission for the 10. Right. I might finish the seven and say, I'm all set, this is enough. And, uh, and we, we sit at seven. Um, but I need to size the project today with this permit or with this approval. That's kind of what I'm thinking. It'll be a phase permitted project. Thank you. Yeah, well, and just, well, I would just ask, uh, sorry to interrupt Mr. Harris, but just, you know, in general, do the members support the concept or are they opposed to the concept so that John uh, can go forward with enthusiasm and, and spend money and get ready to you know, get the project completed. It's not a vote, it's just an indication. You got a rough feeling, anybody want, I mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally very supportive. Dave? Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly how to ask this question, but from a cost standpoint and a marketing standpoint of the property once it's completed for potential tenants, in order to provide these same four units if, would it be less expensive for you to demolish the building and start anew than to renovate this existing old building? You talked about the ceiling height in the basement and all those things, raising the building. Uh, just from a cold-hearted cost standpoint, would it be cheaper to demolish and rebuild to get the same units? Well, I, you know, I, as someone who's represented <coughs> A lot of builders over a lot of years. Uh, I haven't met a builder yet who said, "Yeah, let's work on the old one," because all you have to do is uh, take a, a wall that's not true and make everything fit against it. I think I think the simple answer is John understands there are additional costs in maintaining this building, but he's really committed to. Uh, the structure, and so and, and a commitment to the community. The historic part is important to me. It's why I was interested in the project. So that's essentially a component of your it's commitment. It's more expensive right. to save the structure, probably. Thank you. Any other, uh, Greg? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, are there any plans for having an on-site property manager? Assuming everything goes as planned, and you have ten, ten apartments in roughly 20 people living there. Is there any plan about a property manager on site or partially on site? Or? It's not profitable enough at 10 units for me to hire someone to manage the property. So it will be me. Um, if this is successful and working with towns like this, building this type of housing is a good business, I will keep doing it. And eventually, hopefully, I'm not answering the phone calls. But the first year, I'll be answering the phone calls. Thank you. And did I hear that right? You would be interested in occupying, possibly? Well, I'm currently in Hyannis, um, <laughs> so slightly in insulting, but uh, uh, potentially. I mean, Harwich is unbelievable. There's a reason there's nothing for sale in Harwich. Everyone knows that. Right. And, and for whatever it's worth, I mean, John's family <laughs> has had a connection to Harwich uh, since 1980. His grandparents. Uh, Bought a house down on Glen Dune there behind the chuck wagon. <laughs> chuck wagon. And oh the, <laughs> <laughs> and the, you know, and 
his aunt, my wife, has uh, been a resident of the town for th over 30 years. Uh, his uncle Terry, they, he and his wife have a house on Gorham Road that they've lived in for 30 years. So, you know, the, um, you know, John has a lot of connections to Harwich, was one reason why he thinks so highly of the town. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere once it's built. You can find me and ask me anything you want. Well, we've certainly got a half of us, I think, are kind of supportive here. I mean. Yeah, how do you want us to convey our feelings? Okay. No, just simply, all you have to say is <coughs> you think it's a good project. Yeah. And that's, you know. Yes, Mr. Wysak, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm sorry I had another meeting and I was listening to the conversation on my way over here. Oh, and, and I wanted to speak if I could. Um, yesterday. I couldn't stop you. <laughs> you're correct, Mr. Riley. Um, yesterday I was at the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Harwich Affordable Housing Trust. And the conversation for two hours about housing in this community and the issues and the lack of housing. And I've been a housing advocate for years. We built one of the first new developments up at the end of Driftwood Lane known as Community Way. That was built and, and is a still an affordable project today. In fact, one of the chairs of our committee still lives there as an affordable house. This project in, in keeping the exterior, the historical exterior with a minor modification is essential. The Housing Forum in Hyannis about a month ago, there was a statistic that was utilized. It said for the average person on Cape Cod to afford the average home requires an income, a family income of $200,000. And I ask, I look at this room and say, I wonder how many in this room have a family income of greater than 200000 who could afford the average home in the Cape today. Most cannot. And many I know could not afford the homes they live in today at today's prices. I'm a landlord over the line in Dennisport, an apartment complex that has over 60 units. And all of the emotional turmoil I heard of the drugs and the graffiti and all of these things that are going to happen, go visit Saltworks Village on Upper County Road in Dennisport. One of the best managed apartment complexes, majority of those units are one bedroom. I'm a landlord. Average over there is $1,750 to $2,000 a month for rent. That is market today, folks. And what this community needs, if you look at our public safety, the incoming firefighters and policemen who are earning forty to $50,000 a year cannot afford a house. We see our friends who are building uh, from Davenport Corporation some beautiful homes in Queen Anne Road and Headwaters Drive, and some people didn't like that. They're absolutely gorgeous properties. They're providing housing. Not everyone can afford to buy a home. As a realtor, that hurts me to say that, but that's the reality. But young people living in this community today, workforce housing, which is defined by 80 to 110% of the area, the area median income, which is about 90 to $100,000 for workforce housing. Those folks can afford Mr. Carey's apartments. We have to do something about housing in this community. We talked two years about the Habitat for Humanity, uh, Habitat for Humanity project in West Harwich. Two years to get through permitting. Because the same arguments that I heard coming over here tonight were being said then. Those homes were dedicated two weeks ago. Families, local families, moving into those homes. So I highly encourage you. Make the modifications you need to make, but allow him to develop this property to get the housing in this community that is so urgently needed so that we can stop the flight of people leaving Cape Cod and we can have young people like Mr. Carey stay here, work here, and have a family here. So thank you. Halciotis? Halciotis. Halciotis. Okay, people have to stop being able to pronounce that properly. Nice to have you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Wysak. Appreciate it. So I think you've kind of got a... Yep. Here. 
where we are. I look forward yeah. to getting tacking down some of these details yeah. at our next meeting. And yeah, well, thank we you for taking the time. And, and uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. oh, I'm sorry. One question. Yeah, one more. Could we get some house plans that are larger than what we received? In the floor plans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. You want the big I'd like to be able to read them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we'll get bigger plans. Okay, right. thanks. <laughs> Thank you all. Appreciate your being here tonight. Do you need a motion to continue? Uh, yes, we do. Can I have a motion to continue? So moved. 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 Second. Second. Date. We have a second. Two. Set a date and time. Date. Uh, set to a date and time. Our next meeting, which is the 27th, 27th, no sooner than 6 more time? <laughs> At a day. No sooner than 6.30 on no, the 27th. On the 27th. <laughs> Motion by Craig, second by Emily. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All set. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have the next matter, but I have to talk to these guys before they leave. So yep. I can have five minutes? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, uh, in using that next couple of minutes, why don't we hop down to um, minutes? We have the minutes here. Um, were there any questions on the minutes? Straight up. If there are no amendments or changes, I'll make a motion we accept as read. We have a motion to accept, second by Rudy. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 There was another person that was doing the minutes um, uh, prior to my being here. So we're waiting on those from October. From October, right. We have okay. one that's So once they're one, available, right. I'll send them out as well. Is Alicia, I guess it was? No, it was somebody else. Somebody I don't know. So I'm working with um, Megan. Okay, great. So we have a couple of minutes. Uh, do we want to jump down to the um, Davenport? Thing at this point, do you think yes, that's okay, he's here. Mr. He's Vieira? Here. Thank you for being so patient. Appreciate you coming here. So uh, this is the public meeting portion of the uh, planning board this evening. We're going to be talking <coughs> about uh, the 1997 number 2189 open space definitive plan approved on March 18th, 1997. Uh, Davenport Realty was requesting an approval to reaffirm the subdivision of lot number two at Joanna's Path. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vieira. <clears throat> Good evening. evening. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Jamie Vieira. I'm an attorney and I am the vice president and chief of staff of the Davenport Companies. For those of you who may not have had an opportunity to read the narrative that was provided by town council, a brief summary here back in 1997, as the chairman indicated, um, the subdivision plan of 11 buildable lots and two open space lots was approved. Subsequent to that approval, the lawyer who was tasked with the responsibility of recording the plan along with the engineer and surveyor who drafted the plan, Mr. Sweetser, the attorney, Mr. Crenny, embarked on the process of getting that plan recorded at the land court. However, for reasons that nobody can seem to figure out, it was never recorded. The trail runs cold where the original Mylar may be. The files of Mr. Sweetser, he doesn't have it. The files of Mr. Crenny's office and of predecessors and successors, they don't have it. The land court had no reference of ever receiving it or even being advised that it was there. Notwithstanding that, building permits were issued, houses were constructed, occupancy permits were issued, the town assessor's office assesses us for 11 separate parcels of land and we pay taxes on them and we rent <coughs> all 11 of those houses at an affordable rate, I might suggest to all of you. This was pointed out about six months ago that there was no reference to a recorded plan. So I went on this diligent search, I uncovered what I uncovered and here we are this evening now with a process to cure this where really there is no fault to be laid anywhere across the board, yet it needs to be remedied. And so we have had a new plan prepared. It is exactly the same in terms of the lot layouts, the configuration of the lots, the dimensions are the same. The land court to its exacting standards is asked, however, that we show the houses on it. So there is no modification of the older plan 
but rather the process requires what is essentially reaffirmation. As town council pointed out, we'd be requesting that you take a vote to reaffirm that subdivision, and I have the original two mylars and a backup um, paper copy. One original mylar goes to the land court, two would stay here with the town. A notice of action then gets submitted to the town clerk at the end of 20 days, if there's no appeal, then I will submit the mylar, the notice of action, a municipal lien certificate, and a few hundred dollars to the land court, and the plan will get recorded, and we have now breathed life and validity back into the lots that have been there since 1997, developed with houses on them. So that's the backstory. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer it. Otherwise, I've got three copies after the vote is taken. I brought the pen necessary for that execution. Always be prepared, right? And that's correct. <laughs> And so um, with that, um, that's my story, and I'm hoping that you would act favorably on the request. All right, well, um, all do uh, understood. I think the paper trail issue is totally clear. We get it, you know, this is one of these things that falls through the, um, great. However, I had a conversation with Paul this afternoon, and there was one dangling issue about deed integrity, or title integrity. Would you care to address that? Just, I mean, I, we don't want to put a, well, sand in the gears. We just want to make sure that our co base is covered. Okay, sure. So just one, one issue here. So uh, I have done no re research on this, but um, um, it's clear that, that there was mistakes made by on the town side and, and um, on the owners, applicants, lawyers, engineer side. Um, as you know, the, the, the process after a project has been approved um, but our subdivision plans um, have covenants, and the covenants say that all the utilities will be built, um, or the, the the applicant will post a bond to cover the cost of, of building out all of the uh, uh, improvements of the subdivision, and that uh, the planning board uh, would rec be required to sign a release of covenant for each and every lot. Um, depending on where it stands, whether there's a bond or when there's a bond's release. And so my only concern, and I guess this is, I'll put this in the form of a question, since none of these, it, it, since it appears that no lots were released, because the, the state form for a lot release has a line that, that asks what's the, the, um, the, the deed reference, what's the book and page number of the plan that these lots are being released from. And so my concern is that um, there may not be any lot releases and that down the road, when somebody goes to buy or sell or, or, or mortgage um, or refinance, that um, um, a title attorney with a sharp eye is gonna say, wait a minute, where's the lot release? We have to go back to the planning board and get that signed. And over the years, I've seen that happen lots of times where years later, one or two weren't released or someone forgot and the attorney didn't pick up on it and they come back to the planning board, usually in a hurry, asking to have those, um, uh, the lot release form signed, notarized and then recorded. So I, I think that it's a, it's a simple solution uh, that, that um, Attorney Vieira and, and Council Quessel have come up with to just have the board sign off on that and get it recorded. But I have a concern about the possibility of a, a defect in the chain of title because those lots were never released, and and how are we going to prevent these residents from from you know running into a red flag at some point in time if there's some kind of defect in the title? Can we do a bank shot tonight? Well, we still own every parcel. Right. We've never deeded out a single one of the lots. So as the record stands now. This is lot two shown on land court plan, and I'll spare you the numbers right. that's there. When this was all done back in the day and things were released, there were sign-offs on the road, on the utilities, on all of that because there was no way to get building permits otherwise. Everyone seemed to assume and operate on the fact that the plan had gone to record and the lots were there. So whatever was required by way of covenants was released back at the time where we wouldn't have got building permits. So I'm comfortable with the title issue, and I guess I'm the one that would have to assume the risk on the title issue right. here in, in going forward with this. So I'm comfortable with the occupancy permits, 
the covenants that were there were released, the road is already done and the utilities are in, and we haven't deeded anything out. The real problem, and it would have solved itself back then, is we wouldn't have had a deed source to give you a reference to the plan right. if we were going to convey a lot out. Now we have a reference. We have no intention of selling any of them. Right. Don't get me wrong. This just solves the problem that you know we got it subdivided. The lots are in existence. They're being taxed. <laughs> we need to just breathe life into it. I'm, I appreciate the concern, and it's a great question. But I know looking back at the file, there were releases that were given back then. So someone could dig into the town file and find that we got the road sign off, we got the utility sign off, we've got all the sign offs we've needed. Okay. Do we no, no, need no, to it, vote on this or do we simply sign? I think the council requested that there be a vote to reaffirm the subdivision and then sign. Can I get a motion or do we have any further discussion on this? I'm sorry, I didn't mean I have to go too long. It was, ah. Yes, so. So you have two copies of the original? I've got mylar. two original Mylars and a paper copy. And we'd okay. like to have all three executed. And, but you have no, um, no, none of our decisions? I'm so sorry? You don't have the copy of our decisions? What I have is a copy <coughs> of the old subdivision plan uh -huh. that was endorsed by the planning board. Okay. This is the old plan that was there. Yeah. I have, so I went through the files I could not find a recorded vote in the file, but I do have the recorded plan. And then I have copies of each and every approved septic system, building permit, lot plot plan, and occupancy permit for each and every house that was built. Okay. Yeah, because the planning board signed off on this one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So you know, the same one I have. I, I, don't, I don't even see what, you know, I think this is a formality at this point, right? Seems like. So, a motion? Yeah, I'll entertain a motion to sign and execute. Um, make a motion to sign and execute the uh, request for approval to reaffirm the subdivision of Lot 2, Joanna's Path, uh, PB 1997, number 2189. I will second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Why don't okay. we just, should we file up and sign on the on the board on the the desk there? Yeah, we need your help holding this. Yeah. Yeah. I have a second pen too. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's do a vote on that just yeah. because they requested it and let's confirm it. Yeah. No, we're Good idea. More, none of more and then um, let's do that real quickly and then we can finish up with uh, Stone Horse. <laughs> Feels a little 1776. Yeah, really. <laughs> We just need breeches and tricorns and wigs. Wigs. What am I thinking? Of all people.
Without giving advice, I would suggest that the notice of action be taken and filed with the town clerk. You can certainly ask the clerk their position on whether or not they want to actually see the plan or not. I think thereafter that it should go to the planning department. And then ultimately, once I record the plan, I'll provide proof of a recorded plan to the tax collector's office, and then they can make notation of that on the reference to the tax bill. Right. Do you want to write the notice of? Action and uh, is that a form that you have in nope. some respect? I, I can do that. Okay, okay. you'll do that. Right. So we'll just write a very brief certificate of action, just one paragraph explanation of what this was. <laughs> yeah, just a actually cold case. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we have a, like an acoustic sound? Or dun dun. Dun dun. <laughs> I know there's a form of notice mm -hmm. of action. There is the endorsement on the plan itself that could be t signed by the clerk. So six, one way, half dozen the other. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Paragraph. How about if I, um, after I have a draft, I'll run it by you, make sure it's okay. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I will leave you with these two. Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Vieira. Thank you very much. Nice to get this put behind us yeah. after <laughs> 24 years. years or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> What's 24 <laughs> years? Right, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rod, could you just give us five seconds to take one more vote? Um, we have a... Um, a uh, request for a um, continuance from eastward, right? So can I get a motion and a second on a, a, a motion to continue at, until the 27th of December, no earlier than 6.30 p.m.? So moved. Second. No second. second. We have a motion from Mr. Chadwick, a second from Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great, Mr. Riley, thank you for your patience. Nice to see you again. You have a nice break. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. Good. So we're back at Stonehorse and not the Yacht Stonehorse Club. Stonehorse in, in the, uh, so I was a little confused uh, okay. the last time we were here. The, uh, uh, I've been speaking with Elaine Banta. Right. Our dear departed Elaine. No, don't say relocated. That way. Relocated. 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 Gone to the heaven known as the recreation department. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> anyway, and and she mentioned three things that we should address, and so I came in thinking that's what we're going to talk about. I didn't realize that the list of adjustments or modifications had never been discussed here. Right. So uh, now I know. So what I'd like to do uh, is kind of review them okay. right now. Get your thoughts on them. Okay. Uh, see, you know. So apparently, Mr. Rudnick discussed them with, uh, I assume Elaine, but I really don't know. But clearly with Ray Chesley. Right. And I guess then we sent this letter. He sent the letter. Uh, Listing all the changes, and nobody said anything. So he's thinking, "Oh, he's thinking, oh well, it must be okay." You know, right. So, so uh, uh, now we're back on the beam. Any change, any adjustments from the decision, the special permit decision, have to be approved by you. And and 
some have to, would, would have to have a, a new hearing, right. modify the original decision. Some, I think, would be minor and not require a new hearing. So um, I'd like to discuss the things that you <coughs> hear for those adjustments and see which ones you think require a formal hearing, which ones uh, can we deal with, dealt with informally. So, well, why don't we ask Paul, because I think the, I thought you had a great idea today of just saying, let's have a, a list of talking points and go through it, right? That we both agree on, all parties, and we come to sit and yeah. figure out how to get an occupancy permit here right. going, right? I mean, so. I think it would be helpful. So you said that there was a letter, and, and um, it would be helpful if the board had a copy of a letter that explained um, each thing that was uh, different or built differently than what was on the approved plan, and it would be helpful to maybe have a, um, a plan that just kind of highlights the things that were changed from what was approved. Right. And then the board will have that in front of them, and they can. Because I think what happens is we all go get a copy of the plan, we all go out to the site, and we all come up with like yep. with okay. seven different things. And instead of having Circus Maximus and a circular firing squad on you in the center. Oh, yeah. Why don't yeah, you we, tell we, us we what we're like looking those. at, right? Yeah, we don't want that. Nobody wants that. So, okay, so what I, do they say? Help me, help you kind of thing? Like, uh, we and, need and to get my clarity. So, okay. I have this letter dated July 18th, 2022, with 14 items on it. So right. Is this the letter we should be using? If that covers everything, then that would that would work. Um, so you don't have a copy of that? We that don't just have came that letter. Yet. Right. So oh, you don't, don't make oh, oh, you don't don't have have July 18th? No, that was to the building commissioner, so that's... No, it's just to the board members, to the planning board. That's, that's why I thought I folks think. were aware of it. Right. Would you like for me to go make can copies you, now? Can we do that? Yes. Sure. Can we take is that it? different than the July 18th, 2022? Well, that is... No, yeah, so you have a copy of that. I yeah, have a copy of right. so I think we all... Have have I don't have, have a copy of that. No, we have. All right. I don't think I have a copy. All right, so I'll make a few. Right. right. Okay. We just take a couple minutes then, and we'll. Follow it is, I, I do have to say, uh, without sucking up unnecessarily, <laughs> it's great to have a town planner. <laughs> right. Yeah. No question. Second the motion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the. Uh, you know, it's been tough for us, but it's been tough for you guys too. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and I think tough too on the staff. Yeah. Who's yeah. for like basically three years? We've kind of been hobbling along with, you know, partial and then, you know, uh, the thing is, John Iden, the time, thing is, right. John Iden was so great. Right. Yes. For him to just bail. Yeah. You know, was that was get tough. a better job or whatever. Yeah. Oh no, I. You know, it's. I'm not criticizing him, but you know, our loss is Brewster's gain. Brewster's right. Gain. Clearly. 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 The. Um, which has been the story since 1803, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chatham just... Very good, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chatham has been with, without a town planner for, for several months, five or six months now. And uh, we had a, a person who worked with us several years ago named Ryan Bennett. And then she went to Brewster. And she was in Brewster for several years. Then she ended up uh, Barnstable, and she just literally Thank just started this week. Also, uh, her, her name now is Thank you so much, Ryan Christian Berry. Please don't um, encourage that. anyone to go to Chatham unless they have to. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> is this our definitive oh, no. list then? This is our list, I think, right now. That's is right. It fit, is it? Why? I'm surprised we didn't see this back in July. Or we did. Uh, yeah, we didn't see it in July. Yeah. So July, but sometime we had it quite a while it, ago. We had, we had it, had it last meeting. Yes. Right. But we well, even we, had it before that. Right. But we didn't have the. We didn't have bill or. No, right. right. We didn't have. Yeah. So I. Yeah. So let's. I have a. I have a plan. We have it now. We have an as built now. Right. We have the as built now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Because yeah. the, these just get dropped off at my office. So. You yeah. 
So I, I recommend that as soon as we get this next copy in here, we go through this methodically one by one. I know some of you have taken notes on doing drive-bys and walkthroughs, and we'll let's get this squared away tonight. Okay. And one of the questions that came up. Uh, thank you, Sheila. Right? Thank you, Appreciate Sheila. It. One of the questions that came up when we were last here was um, the number of rooms being used on a year-round basis, and uh, Mr. Rudnick says there are. Uh, 12 or 13 rooms being used, uh, which is, and 20 were authorized. Right. To use year round. So I'll put that to bed. All right, so why don't we start at the top of the head parade here with number one, the handicap ramps on south and north ends of the new building. So I see the indication for walkways, crushed stone. Help me see the the handicap ramps. Does anybody have a magnifying glass? <laughs> I do. They, okay, Dan. The ramps are, I think, these. On the left, uh, right, so, uh, yep. Two on each building. So they, each one has got a kind of a curl around with a landing? Right. They're like a P-shaped and a <laughs> Q-shaped on each end? Okay, good enough. So right. we can check that, right? That's the yes, yes, circle? But, but, well, just a minute. Uh, yeah. Yep, please. please. They're not paved. They're not right. cement. They're not paved. They're crushed stone. Would have been nice to have That's why we got them on our list earlier right. today. Right. <laughs> Will you see the dotted lines, the dots along the uh, side of the south side? Right. Uh, that's crushed stone. And that the ones that are shown that are supposed to be cement are not, it, it says in small print, crushed stone. Right. Right, right. where it says county. In red, crushed stone. Those are supposed to be cement. Right. Same on the other side, on the other building. Uh, okay, I'll talk to Mr. Rudding about okay. that. And the, the other th thing I noticed while we're talking about cement, the stairway going up to the, this large patio needs to be addressed because I wouldn't even walk up it the other day. You say that again, I'm sorry, Bill. On this stairway. Side. The stairway, yeah. Yep, that uh, parking yeah, yeah. space number nine, it looks like. That stairway going up to the large patio oh, yeah. between the right. two story dormitory, uh, the original office, and the new one, that stairway is really hazardous. Which, which, uh, which walkway are you talking about, uh, Bill? So, as you're looking at the office? Yes. To the right of it. Parking lot See, number parking, nine. Yeah, parking yep. lot number okay. nine in the stairs. Well, there's a, yeah. That's an existing stairway that never got fixed or replaced. Right. And it should have been. The original plan was that the gazebo was going to go at yes. the, essentially right. in the area of the top of that stairwell or stairway. That didn't happen. Okay. So we've got two cement issues then there. Yeah. And, I, and I have a question about, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the number one, the, it says the handicap ramps approved by the state. Um, and when I was out there taking a look at it, the same comments that were made um, by Megan and I think maybe she went with a town engineer that uh, the handicap spot near uh, parking space 13, it would be like 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. it, the location of that doesn't, uh, it's at a curb. The only place that I saw from that, that side parking lot that, that doesn't have a curb that a, a, a wheelchair could transverse um, <coughs> is in front of lot number 13 comes out right next to the fence stockade or the fence for the right. uh, no dumpster right there's like an apron that comes down there yeah but it's really it's it doesn't it's tight it doesn't allow you if you look at where that uh, ramp goes to if you look at the number 13 yeah I see that okay I'll bring that up. And you enter there, 
So it doesn't, you're not, no you're not able to get to the north building. Right. Follow me, Bill. Okay, I see what you mean. And the other thing that I think is missing. So what they, so what they should be doing is, uh, so the wheelchair, wheelchair ramp should be adjacent to the handicapped parking space, which is yes. yeah. over. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. That's why I questioned the wording where handicap ramps approved by the state. Well, you know, right. creative writing. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> the they other will, thing that I they think. They probably approved on the original plan. Oh, this is I, think that's, that's plan. That. I think oh. that's what you meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I noticed that uh, the area we were just discussing, if you look at thir parking lot 13 and you follow that pathway, the existing pathway that runs uh, in front of, or I guess to the rear of the <coughs> office building is not shown on this plan. The relocated handicap ramp into the office is shown, but that walkway is missing. Okay, and that would be a walkway coming up from 13? Mm -hmm. Well, 15. if you go from 13, you know, where the large area is, there's a circle yeah. in the middle of it. Yeah. And then when you, if you <clears throat> drew a line from the edge of there to, to along the back of the dorm, or, along the, the back of the office. I don't know how you're, it may go into the, the patio or it may be on the other side of the handicap ramp. I'm not. Yeah. I think that needs to be clear and clarified on here. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll review that with them. So control boxes, number two. I had a yep. question, Greg. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, so, are the the control boxes with the septic system and the electrical um, panels located? Where where is that actual control box located thank you. on this site plan? I see a almost in between the two buildings. Yeah, north, they closer to the north. It says yeah, they have, they have electric, electric meters. Meter handhold in the transformer. Also to the south side of the south building there seems to be a, a square that says electrical enclosure and meter and then septic system. Right. Right Is that there. the control box? That's, that's the control box. Okay. That's it. All right. Should that be labeled as such? Probably is. Oh, it it says electrical enclosure for yeah, septic system. It said system. it was originally electrical so certainly it would be labeled that way. Yeah. But I wonder you know, sounds Something like to check yeah. well, it says labeled, stuff. which is labeled as an electrical enclosure. It should have been installed open. They would have had to be enclosed in a chain link fence with barbed wire to prevent right. anybody from tampering. <clears throat> so it says electrical, but it should say now, ele I would think, electrical and right. septic system. Control well, it says electrical for septic. So I think, and it says meter is on the one side. Yeah, one's the meter, one's the electrical for the septic. Right. Oh, it's just for the electric, it's not for the rest. Thank you. So it looks like that's, are we clear on that? Is that a clear? I, th I think so. It looks like I, it's pretty I think labeled. the box is uh, yeah. what, okay. what makes it safe. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Instead of a fence. And, have they, and they've been closed in and sealed off, uh, presumably, I would think. Well, it's, I think the electric think box itself is the seal. Right. Yeah. I think so. I think it's a locking cabinet, but there's no fence. I mean, you wouldn't have had people swarming over the property with an open. I don't think you want to break the lock up <laughs> yeah. and stick your hand in there. Right. No. Yeah. Uh, am I confused here? If Just receiving this today, tonight, if I'd had this when I went to the site to look at this, right. it would be much easier to, to be able to come to the point where we could sign off. Right. 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 Well, I guess some so, of us had it. Some yeah, point. I don't know. Why so are we going through this now when we don't have the site to confirm what's shown on this drum? I think that was in a... It was in a previous packet, like this summer. Really, the, well, the real... I know, and I went out there this summer, but I, I well, didn't keep my notes, and I don't remember what I saw. Yeah. Right. Well, the, I mean, do you want to do it now? you want to uh, come back in two weeks and we'll do it again? I mean, after all... I mean, we'll come this far. It's up to it's up to the board. 
you want to do do you want to actually do an on-site with the checklist and to confirm okay. to your satisfaction uh, typically this is done by staff it's by not staff. done by the board right. members right it's going to be should, I, I should be done by staff. 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 staff right in the first place so what do you want to do what's the bush I think we should board? go over it I think yeah all right because we may have somebody in the audience that would this like and those other it. two assignments back in August or whenever it was was the first time after 10 years on this planning board that I've been asked to go out and do a site inspection. Yeah, so wow. it's unusual. Well, well, and I but I think well, we haven't had staff either, so right. Yeah. So, but I think right. the the, right. um, the critical thing I is enjoyed is that, it though. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> but I think the critical thing is we want to get closure on this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean, for both parties and for the fact that, you know, you guys got trapped in COVID and a lot of stuff had to happen right. Im improvisationally, we're held accountable for the town to make sure everything's legit. So let's <coughs> just, I, I kind of leaning that we just ought to just go out and take the extra time, nail this down with our notes and do it in person, then come back and just do it. Do it like run through it quickly because well, I, I, I think, think you make an excellent point. I mean, I think that would personally be great to have a full think, size drawing of this. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I can get bigger. I can get bigger plans. Personally, I think that would make more sense because uh, the greater understanding we have as we go through the checklist, right, the more profitable the discussion is going to be. Right. Right. May I ask a Please. general question? I'm new newer on the right. um, is it typical to have this many adjustments and is there a definition of a field adjustment is it, as I'm reading Good through this question. there uh, some of these don't feel like they feel like deviations from what the plan that was approved and and also so we're looking at these after the fact should this right. have been brought so some of these that are again feel like deviations from the plan that was approved that are pretty significant isn't there a process through which th this should have come um, to us so we wouldn't be doing this right now Not only they well go. I mean but in defense in their defense the letter was addressed to the members of the planning board so I, I mean I don't know no no I, no I'm no. not I'm talking way before that so right. th like the patio is being changed which are very significantly different than what was on the plan like shouldn't that have come before the patios were put in shouldn't that have come to us as that was not part of what the plan that was approved well, i suppose in a perfect world but, but I, that's what i'm saying in terms of like the the covid casualty was a lot of the coherence of the normal flow right i mean it basically got interrupted we didn't have people in the office people weren't going out to do the the field inspection how do we I, I, personally again new it sets a precedent if we're going to even if I there were Right. You know, things that have I completely understand that, and and again, I want right. to also say I'm in the spirit of this project. I was not inv involved in the approval. I'm supportive of the spirit of it. It just feels like what we're we're just checking things off the list. Where this it would set a big precedent, like you know, yes, oh, I had this thing happen or this thing happened, so I just changed the plan. So well, you know, I, I mean, I I feel like they're we're going through the minutia, but there's a much bigger discussion that needs to well, be I had think, here. Well, I think I think the the. Uh, <coughs> A couple of things were going on at that time. I mean, the uh, second building hadn't been built, hadn't been finished when the uh, COVID hit. Uh, the, the money to finance the project uh, dried up because it was going to be used by uh, people from, mostly from Europe with visas who were working at hotels and motels, and none of them came over because the, because the country got closed. Uh, you know, and, and candidly, you know, the, uh, Mr. Rudnick was pushed very close to bankruptcy. It was a very, very, very difficult financially for him. So, and, and then there was a staff issue, as in, you know, we didn't, we have staff. As he says, I went through three building inspectors. Well, you know, but so I think I think what was happening was there wasn't any money, there weren't any people there, or there were very few, and so he was just doing stuff on the fly, 
so there weren't gaping holes in the ground. You know, so, now the, so now the question is, and this is really what we're here for, right. so do, do these things, uh, we'd like to leave them as they are, so some of these things require a modification of the decision, right. and some of them don't, and so that's. I think we just need to get a clear inventory of what the spread is between the plan, and the as-built, and what works and what doesn't work for right. the, in, the in, code. In, in, uh, in an ordinary course of events, without a COVID pandemic, I think uh, you know, there would have been conversation between you know, the developer and town staff as they went along, rather than uh, having it all come out at the end. So, I mean, I mean, you're correct about that, but it was an unusual time. That's, that's all I can say. So, uh, to, to answer your question, Emily, um, staff would have been notified, and they, they would have gone out and talked about the changes, and lots of times, well, like Charlene, would let us know what was going on and tell us about the, sh the change. And then other times, you would have to come in front of the, the board, the court, depending on how Charlene felt about it. So that, and are you saying that that did not happen? That's what it looks like. Looks right. like. Yeah. Okay. So following up yeah. to that, I thought I heard some conversation earlier tonight, and I apologize, I forget who said it, if I heard it, that some of these changes were field approved by our building inspector? Or I didn't, I, That I did not say. What I okay. said was, Mr. Rudnick had reviewed all these with Ray Chesley. Okay, that's what I heard. Uh, and I think that review resulted in this letter. And so Mr. Rudnick got the impression that Ray had no objection to them. Uh, but Ray's gone on to right. cleaner pastures, I guess, or calmer pastures. <laughs> so. Uh, I mean, all, all I get, you know, I mean. Well, fo following up on Emily's question, um, and for my edification as well, is the process um, in Harwich that the, who becomes responsible for yay or naying, okaying the changes? in the field during construction. And if oh. it is Ray or the building inspector who goes down there and says, okay, well, instead of two patios, you wanna do one, yeah, that's no problem, I can do it. So then our role is not present then. If the building inspector has done that and said that, then why are you here before us? What are we doing now? Well, well the, you know, the, the uh, well, I think because you know, a letter was sent to the planning board. You know, um, you know. At the end, he says, "Let us know if there's anything further you require." I mean, so in other words, right. he was just stumbling along. I mean, what he told me was, once they started building the thing, they realized that a single patio made more sense than having two patios. So that's why they did it that way. That's not what was approved. I understand that. Right. I'm not suggesting it was correct. I'm just saying that's what he did in the field with the people that were there. It made more sense to do it this way. So he did it, which he should have checked with the town, but he didn't. At least as far as I know, he didn't. Uh, but so the and so that's why I say so. Some of these things require modifications, and some of them are not significant and don't require modification. That's. That's how I started the you know, my, you know, talk with you today, and that's sort of what we want to do. So, I think what Dave has suggested, and, and Duncan seems to approve it, you know, uh, go out. You got the list. Look, go out to the site. Look at it, and then we come back and talk about it, and then, then we can discuss, you know. Rather than saying you, sh you shouldn't have done that, let's just say this is okay, this requires a modification, that's not okay. Right. Once you've had a chance to, to look at it. Using the patio as an example, 
had the original plan that came before us for approval shown the patio the way it's now constructed, would we approve that or would we say, oh no, you've got to have two patios? Of course not. We would have said probably what he's actually built is fine. Right. Right. So right. those are the kinds of ways I think we need to look at this. Right. Yeah, I mean, without, without getting away from the fact that they should have been cleared with staff before it was done. Right. I think what happens with us is when we get in kind of like a double bind where somebody takes action and then the town, you know, has approved something that's not honored in actuality and then, you know, and we'll the clock, we get, you know, oh, so no, that we yeah. just got to square this away. I, sure. So I think, you know, what Dave recommends is makes absolute sense. Although, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, with yeah. your permission, it was also related to the parking. So I went right. there specifically today, having read the butter's letter to say, what does the parking look like today? Right. And all of a sudden, there are orange ramps that hadn't been there before and snow stakes, right. which isn't really a good solution because you can see in the summer that's going to be a whole other, you know, free for all parking. Right. Well, so, you know, I think. Uh, in the first place, I don't think it's fair to say that because if, as, long as, as long as the wheel stops stay there, then it won't be free for all parking. They were new to th my visit as of today, having been asked to go a couple of times to this site. So I'm no, trying to represent. They've been, there, they've been there for several weeks, and they, and they were put there because. Uh, but the parking is a big issue with this. So my, and with what the board ahead of my joining it approved right so I think that's a, a site um, piece so that was just my observation today fair or not those, oh, no, no, those that, stops uh, were an observation been there an observation is neither fair nor not fair an observation is what you see and I I understand that but the, the wheel stops have been there for at least a couple of weeks because uh, when I before I came here he had been told one of the things Elaine had said was, you've got people parking on that gravel area, you have to stop that. And that's why those wheel stops went in. Sure, but our job is to listen to the neighbors, listen to the abutters, see if it has been built correctly. You know, I looked at to see whether the trees were alive. They're not alive. I mean, all those kind of things that we were asked to do. So going, moving this forward, and one of the big issues is parking. Right. Do we address this by staff, or do we address this by like a, a field trip where we go down the, this together and see whether everything is as it is. Because I also noted the handicap. How do you get in if right. there's not continuance things as well? We're going to need and to also to move this on to the next place. Yeah. 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 Landscaping yeah. is not there. Is Lighting's not there. Not need a copy of the landscape plan. So right. how, do we, how do we move it forward and well, next step I, I think that probably between now and December 27th, nobody's doing anything important. So we can, what do we say we only do? <laughs> 25th, let's say 8.30 a.m. Yeah, for tonight, of course. Nothing going on. Nothing going on. <laughs> Nothing going on. <laughs> so I, I think that this is probably going to be better if we kind of each, I mean, I've done a couple of runs out there yeah. now. Yeah. So, I mean, and each one is like, I'm looking, what am I looking at kind of thing. So I think this is going to solve... I, Having the plan and the letter to me is like the map and the code and the decoder ring. I think I can figure some of the stuff out. Dave, I'd like so. to. I'd like to hear from Paul. <laughs> yes, thank you. How he sees his role in this, even though you're new. Right. It's still your job, in some ways. So the, the, there may be some language in the zoning bylaw about how modifications to approved plans are handled. Um, I haven't looked for that yet, so I, so I, I don't know what is codified and, and what the rules are, but I can tell you how we usually handle these things. Um, unfortunately, um, there are almost always some changes to an approved plan. Oh, yeah. um, sure. Oftentimes, the types of trees that were um, shown on the plan, oh, we couldn't get them, or the nursery man. Whatever. So um, <clears throat> there, there are clearly modifications to a plan that are minor, and others that are, are maybe bigger that should be considered by the board and in some cases um, if they're significant um, there should be a, another hearing scheduled and the abutter should have a chance to, to right. weigh in on, on, on major modifications. The trouble is that gray area of what's minor and what's major and um, in my last job 
they actually had in their site plan review rules and regulations that the planner had the authority to approve minor modifications. And, um, and that was good because it, it, for the little stuff, the board didn't have to deal with it and, and I could take care of it. And, and that happened fairly often. But um, oftentimes, if there was something that I wasn't comfortable with, I would go to the town engineer and say, is this change to the curbing gonna affect the stormwater? Is that okay? And other times, I would have a conversation with the chairman of the planning board and say, what do you think? Is this a major or a minor? And, and let the, the chairman direct whether or not it should well, come back. That's what we've done in the past. I mean, come back for a hearing. I think. So um, in this case, I'm not familiar at all with the project. You guys have, you know, have been involved with it. And so I would suggest that, that, um, that staff, myself and the building commissioner, um, go out and take a look at, uh, on the ground and, and look to see what we see, compare what's on the approved plan versus the, the, the as-built. And because the board members have history with this and you voted to approve it, um, you guys should go out and do a site inspection again. Right. And then we should get together and decide, um, are all of these things um, okay? Or are some of them more significant that there needs to be some more discussion about? Um, so I, I think that's, that approach makes the most sense. And, and, you know, and to answer Emily's question, there are more than there usually are. And, and the developer um, should have known to come in and get permission. But then again, I know there's been staff turnover here with the building department and the planning department. So, you know, there hasn't been that continuity where they could go and, and talk to the people that they, they needed to get this approval from. So, um, you know, let's just try to make the best of this. But I think we need to, um, to take a, a clear look at what's, what's been built versus what was proposed, see if it all makes sense. I also wanted to bring to the board's attention, there is a, um, a letter that was sent by um, Ken Dressla, Dressa, that you, Dressella, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I wanted to make sure that, that this was on the board's radar tonight, that you read this and, and understand his concerns as well. Well, can we invite Mr. Dressa to come and address the board? I don't think you can avoid it. Right. No, that's good. Mr. Well, Chairman, well, David, well, just well, before well, that, could, yeah. I, could I ask a question? Of Paul, please. Um, is this an old letter? Or no, new? today. Should would it make sense for us to, for the planning board to go with yourself in the building department, or is it better that separate. you guys do it? And either, we do it? however you want to do it. Um, so? Either way works. For I you. would think maybe the chairman could go, but not the whole board. Right. Okay. We would the whole board. We would do our thing. Yeah, we put our voice there. into our chairman. Yeah. Yeah. chairman. And when we talk about the whole board, there's, there's a quorum concern. If, if right, you're then we have to make an make announcement, so meeting. yeah. Right, okay. And the other question or, or request, if I might, uh, when we do get back together, one of the things that I found a little frustrating was some of the list of 14 items, some of them ha have an explanation as to why the change was made, others do not. It just says, you know, proposed walkway <laughs> on the south side was built on the north side. Why? I don't okay, know. I'll, I'll try to get explanations for all those things isn't and that, get them. Isn't that list made up by Elaine? So let's. Sorry, so what? Paul, isn't that list made up by Elaine? I'd like to make a request oh, that. No, the list was done by Rudd. Staff Rudnick. receives a letter like this that it be stamped in and dated. It just came in today, right? Today, yeah. Well, whether it came in today or not, it still needs to be stamped and dated. Right. Which, oh, Mr. Jacilla's letter? Right. Yeah, if I could get a copy of that, I'd appreciate that okay. too. Do we, I have the, um, uh, this, I think I have the summary from the meeting that was held in 2019. Is there, does everybody have oh, this? No. Or, no. And do we have any, are there other notes? Or I would love to. Uh, I think we should probably have a complete Yeah, better file, understand right, the, right. the, 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 the butter and community right, conversation right. that happened. Because I suspect time. that Mr. Dershaw is gonna be telling us, what informing us of a longer discussion that well, Some of the I mean, members of this board have, were not on this board at the time, right. which is why we appreciate your taking the time to come out and clarify your point of view. So I would like to invite Mr. Dushal to address the board. My name is Kent Dushal. I represent the large the landowner that abuts the property at 39 Old County Road. Um, well, first off, I guess some, the letter that was here supplied here tonight. That's a letter supplied by Stonehorse 
Main Street LLC. Mm -hmm. So that should not be considered an all-inclusive list. This, this is generated by them. Um, I guess next I don't quite understand the attorney and the builder. They should be embarrassed by sitting here having to explain to the board what's been on this piece of paper for three years. And now they're coming here and they're asking you to check box, check mark things that are these done and these not done. Their job is to come to you with a finished plan as close to possible as what was done in 2019 with a complete planting of the entire property, have it done and ask for the sign off from the planning board. Why are you babysitting them? Why are you going to go do a job site for field inspections? That's their job. Their job is to bring you a finished product. The idea of them doing field changes on their own makes a big difference. That big patio they put out there in front of one building brings all of the people to that one spot. There's a reason the designer that they hired separated them was to prevent that. Now it's all in one spot. They don't have any kind of paved walkways. It's their job to figure out. They did it wrong. I don't get you guys. You should hold his feet to the fire and make him complete the job. Three years. Forget COVID. Forget all these other excuses. That stuff should have been done the first time. Don't get it. And I'm going to sit there and watch them every day they go over there and work on it to make sure that I understand and I will come back to you guys and explain to you what they did, what they improvised on their own. Parking, everything is on here. You guys created, the, pl the, the planning board created the, the outline of the project. They agreed to it. They signed off on it. They brought information in. They asked for variances and waivers and everything else for parking go from 70 to 17, they got what they asked for. This board took two meetings to approve this whole project. That was it. Two half hour sit downs, done, stamp, done. Hold their feet to the fire. Don't do their work for them. Don't get it. I appreciate the fact you're gonna extend it. And I appreciate the fact that we actually have a town planner and a building commissioner who I sent that same letter to today notifying of all the issues that have been a pain in the butt for three years. I still don't get it. They should be embarrassed. If he's a developer, he knows his stuff. Don't let him get away with it. If you have any questions, I'll answer them. Thank you, sir. Nope. Okay. Well, we just saw this when we sat down. So yeah, we haven't had a chance to kind of fully digest. Yeah, it's part of the list that you can add to his 14 bullet points, but and that I, should I, not be the everything. Right, and I, I appreciate your, your um, sentiment. And um, just for the sake of clarity here is we're kind of working our way out of this. And like I said, there are three of us who were not on the board at the time. So this is some of this is some new information for us. It's been going on for three on their part. It's been going on. They've been getting away with murder. They've been getting away with, and I should use that term on that property, but they've been getting away with a lot of stuff over there that they should not be getting away with. Right. And the, all you're addressing right now is the outside issues. Right. Nobody knows what the inside issues are. I said, that's why I sent the letter to the building commissioner so he can follow up on the inside part because they're operating with absolutely no paperwork. All right. Well, I appreciate it, sir. So... I suggest I go with the planner and the building inspector, and we come back with a um, coherent document to the rest of the board. We'll meet here at 6 a.m. December 25th. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> For the 27th. Okay. Oh, why, don't, why don't we move it into January? You want to do it into January? I move it to the first meeting of January. I mean, January 10th. The 10th? The 10th. You right. okay with that? That's okay. Fine. I'm good with that. So let's take a move, a motion. Can I add yeah, one please. more thing? Um, Absolutely. Site plan, I, the as built, I think the math is wrong on the site coverage. If you add it up, it comes to 29,915, and it's noted as 27,873. I think we'd want 
Get them arithmetic Correct. right. Yeah. 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 So maybe we could get. I had some yeah, questions needed. about some. If of I could have done numbers. math, I would have been a doctor. But you know, I'm just. I did. I used. I used Excel. <laughs> I did it a couple times on my computer in Excel, so it wasn't. It wasn't on the app. Mr. Oh, wow, that's impressive. I, yeah. I would never have thought to like do the math. I'll, I'll, I'll take it up with the engineer. Mr. Right, so Chairman, I have one question. Can we get a copy of the sign-offs from mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> fire department, police, or whoever has to sign off the occupancy permit? Paul, can we get that? Yeah. Is it, have, they, have they signed oh, a temporary? There is, there is, there is, sorry. Well, there is a temporary, temporary right? Well, there's a temporary well, we occupancy have, that's expired. Yeah, so, no so a temporary CO that's expired means there's no certificate of occupancy, and if there are people living there, um, that's, an issue or at multiple levels there's an issue there yeah, yeah. so right. that that, sh that that should be resolved and um, I'm thinking the owner have... should be um, uh, contacting the building department looking for an inspection and, and a final sign off I oh, see all right so the last time we talked to a building inspector which was a temporary guy was here for 30 days or whatever it was yeah. right you no know, he said oh well, get stuff squared away with the planning board and then come see me. So, the... Well, uh, we'll take care of this. But there are 12 to 13 rooms that are occupied right now. So that's right. where we started from. So, to this, to your point, that's not a good scenario. Right. And, and we, we usually try to ask the building commissioner uh, to make sure that all the site plan issues have been resolved before he issues a final CO. I guess I'll just leave that, leave it at that. And, and um, a good working relationship with the building commissioner, they'll check with the planning department, make sure the, that staff has done a final inspection, everything looks okay, and then they'll, they'll issue the final CO. And so that's, that's part of this whole process that we're talking about now. Right. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, uh, you know, I think a final CO is, some distance in the future, yeah. but you know, uh, I'll reach out to the building commissioner because we, you know, we, he's not going to evict these people because they don't have anywhere else to go. So he's got to he's got to continue to provide housing for them. So we'd like to get a, another temporary. So I'll talk to the building commissioner about that. Okay. What is, uh, can I get a? motion then I have one more question okay what, what are the are there legal issues um, other than the obvious about not having a CO and that there are um, people right. living there if there were to be a fire and a fatality in the building I think there are uh, liability like right. huge Is exposure that, uh, who's well, res who well, in the first who's place liable in the first place the building was built in accordance with the building code and the fire regulations. Right. So <coughs> the, uh, uh, and in any event, there would be no liability on the town or any town staff. And the liability rests solely with the property owner if there are code violations. Now, we don't have an occupancy permit because they wanted to get the planning board stuff squared away and they were issuing temporaries. And then Elaine said, well, take care of these three things and we'll get you a temporary occupancy permit again, which was move the gazebo, block off the parking, and do something with one of the parking spaces over by the, the office building dormitory office building so that's what I that's what I came in two weeks ago to talk about those three things because that's that's what <laughs> right. little did I know <laughs> but I, I was just concerned about who has the liability for a situation like that where everyone is now aware that there is no CO and, and the building is being occupied does it, it sounds like it's not the town well, it's actually <coughs> building commission, I would think. It's a legal question, and I'm not a lawyer. Okay. Good answer. Mr. Drushala? 
He's also paying for insurance on the building that if there was a fire and or the accident that happened a few weeks ago, that uh, his insurance is going to say, well, you have no right to occupy this building. Right. You have, you're, we're not paying off on anything. Right. He's paying for insurance that it's not going to cover anything right now. Mr. Drusilla is now an expert on insurance law. I did Thank work. you, Mr. Drusilla. Well, <laughs> at that point, I think we need to get just off. make things up as I go. Off, okay? Yeah. So the, uh, the building was built in accordance with the building code and the fire regulations. It's a sprinkled building. Right. So I will try to get the temporary accident permit. Now, Mr. Mee has only been here a month or something, so we got to get him going on the thing, right. too. Yeah. So, so can I get that motion, please? I'll make a motion. We continue this to uh, January, January 10th. 10th. No later than 6.30. Well, no earlier than 6.30. Oh, <laughs> no earlier than 6.30. Thank you. So motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Second. Third. Oh, I, I, sorry. I missed my chance. Thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. We will get in. Um, Paul, please let me know when the three of us can get together to get on site, and we'll do that, you know, that week after Christmas is like, let's just do it as okay. soon as we can after, you know, we come back to the office. Just even if it's for like a, you know, 45 minute, you know, meet on the site kind of thing. All right, we should try to get it done as soon as possible while we can still see the ground. Absolutely. And if we can do it before, that's even fine. So, I want to wish you all happy. Is there holidays. any other? Mm -hmm. I want to wish you all happy holidays. Same to you. And we're glad to have you. Do we have any other new business before the board? I've, I don't know if it's new business or old business. I'm curious, Anne, how your uh, meetings with CPC went. Well, <laughs> ah. Ah. Um, in the interest of time, do you want me to do it next next time, or do you want me to go through it? Uh, let's do it next time. I just, because it's yeah, after nine. It's after and, nine. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, it was very good. It's a very good process, and we presented on December 5th, yeah. and I have the details. Well, let's. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion. So moved. So we have a move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I still want to have people get 